The power to move a nation forward takes root in the productivity of business and industries. As your Morocco corporate partner, we understand the role power plays in fueling the growth of your business, how it moves, how it brings things to life, how it drives your business, and ultimately, how it plays a role in building a nation. We have evolved from being a power distribution company to a total energy solutions provider. We value the fact that Meralco has taken a very proactive approach to customer service and given us the ability to provide reliable and sustainable services to our customers, effectively tying our relationship with Meralco to our relationship with our customers. There is power in partnerships. Partner with us today. I'm David Saldran. In this edition of Power Ideas, we talk to Kevin Benning, Chief Operating Officer of City of Dreams Manila about how the integrated resort has embarked on a campaign towards sustainability. You know, in a city known for having one of the world's most spectacular sunsets, City of Dreams Manila is the first integrated resort in the country to harness solar energy in equally spectacular fashion. So hello there, Kevin. You know, if it wasn't for the pandemic, <laughs> I would have loved to see in person physically how City of Dreams Manila was able to transform the rooftops of your parking buildings to generate solar power. But I guess a virtual tour with you would be the best for now, right? Hi, David. Yes, it is. You know, welcome to the new normal. We're doing our best to make it work, and I cannot wait to take you on a personal tour of our rooftop when we go back to normal. All right, Kevin, I'm looking forward to that visit. In the meantime, let's talk about how City of Dreams Manila has made a conscious decision to reduce its carbon footprint with solar power being one of those initiatives. You currently have, I understand, 3,120 solar panels installed in the rooftops of two parking buildings, right? Now, that's the record for the largest installation in Metro Manila. The amount of power produced by these solar panels is enough to light up 12,000 homes for a year with an average monthly bill of 1,500 pesos. That is correct. The City of Dreams Manila is extremely proud to be the first integrated resort in the country to harness solar energy. Now, this project, we invested 76 million pesos and 1.2 megawatts of solar power into this property, maximizing our car park, as we mentioned. It's an extremely important step for us to achieve our goal for carbon neutrality and becoming a zero waste resort. You know, having a clean renewable source of energy with no waste or emissions is just the right thing to do in our world moving forward. That sounds really fantastic, Kevin, congratulations. But I wanna know, what are we looking at in terms of savings in power costs? Oh, we're looking at about 16 million pesos of energy savings per year. That equals about 20% of our hotel power consumption across our 940 rooms. But more than savings, we're looking at the larger picture. As an environmentally responsible business, we must do our share in the global movement to combat climate change. And we want to make a difference and fulfill our social responsibility. Why did you choose Medalco subsidiary Spectrum as your partner? I was asked this question quite a few times in December when we uh, launched this program and, and, and implemented our solar panels. And the answer is very simple. Spectrum provides the best solutions, services, and capabilities in the Philippines in regards to solar and energy saving solutions. You know, On top of that, with Spectrum being a subsidiary of Morocco, who is somebody we've worked extremely closely with since we started City of Dreams, we have a great level of trust in the long-term vision of Spectrum. And something I continue to share with everyone is the speed and efficiency of which this project came together. Now, it was only four months from start to finish when we partnered with Spectrum in July of 2019 to launch this fully in December of 2019. I, I've been working here for five years and I've yet to see a project come together as quickly and as well as this one did. 
I also understand, Kevin, there are other initiatives within your resort complex which are geared towards self-sufficiency, correct? All of which fall under your Sustainable Dreams program. So tell me more about this program of yours. As far as our overall sustainability strategy for Melco Resorts and entertainment across all of our properties in Asia and Europe, we launched uh, here in Manila the Sustainable Dreams program in 2018. And that's really focused on long-term sustainability initiatives across multiple channels. Wow, that's an amazing list of programs. And the best thing about it is, you know, these are all long-term programs with long-term effects. So whether there's a pandemic or not, Kevin, like those solar panels of yours, for example, they'll continue to generate power, whether there's a pandemic or not. You know, as they say in your industry, the house always wins. But at City of Dreams Manila, looks like the environment wins as well. That's absolutely true, David. Thank you so much. And thank you so much as well. Kevin Benning, COO of City of Dreams, Manila. Stay safe, Kevin. You as well. This is David Saldra for Power Ideas by Meraldo. understands that reliable and dependable energy is necessary to sustain and grow a business. Businesses that power a nation. Power Ideas by Meralco. Brought to you by the Meralco Corporate Partners. San Beda College is a private Roman Catholic college with a satellite campus in Alabang, Montenlupa. It is a sprawling 9.6 hectare campus with a student population of 7,000 from preschool to postgraduate levels. This campus, which first opened its doors in 1972, has gone through major changes through the years. In July 2013, the leadership of San Beda College Alabang decided to implement an energy efficiency campaign throughout its campus. My vision in terms of energy consumption is for San Beda to be a front runner in being an energy efficient school. Now this can only be done through a close and continuous monitoring and improvement of the power utilization in the school. Our school, uh, San Beda College in the south, we noticed that it increased its population and the volume of our student coincides with our energy consumption. So we have to take a measure in order to conserve energy and our consumption of electricity in order to save. And our savings will go back to the school because we use it to buy or upgrade our facilities. After San Beda reached out to Meralco, Relationship Manager Patrick Panlillo set up a meeting with San Beda to discuss how to improve the utilization of electricity in the campus. Pagtawad sa team ng Meralco sa aming school ay dagli nga sila nagkandak ng energy efficiency audit sa aming paralan at pagkatapos nga nito ay nilibot namin yung mga classrooms, mga offices. Together with the school's technical personnel, a thorough walkthrough of the electrical facilities of the school was conducted by the engineers of Meralco. Energy Solutions engineer Boyam Calderon and his team came up with a detailed recommendation on how to more effectively manage the school's power. Dinala na yung kopya dito sa San Beda at pinakita nga sa amin ang mga naging problema na nakita nila. So karamihan nga sa gamit namin mga equipment, sa mga naiiwang bukas na bintana at nakita din na yung mga luma namin airco na pilit pa rin namin pinagagana maski pwede nang i-junk. Besides the gradual replacement of conventional to inverter type air conditioners, Meralco's recommendations also included replacing lighting with LED lights that not only consume less power but provide more effective lighting the use of blinds and window tinting were also practical solutions to keep out the heat and optimize air conditioning. Suggestions like keeping a steady thermostat were practical solutions that did not require any investment. 
After a year, when we implemented the recommendation of Niralco, not only I am surprised, but we are all very happy because we saw the drastic uh, difference and the lowering of our electrical consumption. So we saved a lot. I think we succeeded in uh, being efficient uh, in utilizing our facilities, especially our energy consumption. The proper implementation in San Beda's grade school buildings were replicated in the high school and college facilities. Maralco now does regular preventive maintenance checkups for the school's electrical facilities. These consolidated efforts have brought down energy consumption by 70,000 kilowatt hours for academic year 2014 to 2015. The program also brought about substantial savings for the campus. Despite the increase in the number of enrollees, the EII, or Energy Intensity Index, decreased. Miraku helped us, assisted us in uh, controlling and managing our tuition fees and expenses. Our quality education doesn't come with a regular increase of the fee or high price. And more importantly, our students will also inculcate the values of energy management so they can help not only in the society and our school, but also they can apply it at their home and help their parents save from their expenses. We are happy to be of service to a learning institution like San Beda College, Alabang, as it provides quality education for a brighter future for the growth of our nation. It's our privilege to assist and contribute in every way to further knowledge and education. Ako po si Patrick Pandilio at ito po ang aking team ng Energy Experts ang dapong pumulong sa inyo. Power Ideas by Maracco for end-to-end -end energy solutions Contact your Naruto corporate partners. Talk to us today. We studied and uh, looked for ways to reduce our electricity consumption and the uh, maintenance cost at the same time for our equipment. Currently, MSERV is uh, handling our chiller management system here in uh, ILCC Alabang. Insular Life was able to save 24 million in 2016 and 26 million in 2017. For their future projects here, they will be upgrading our building management system here also in Alabang because we wanted to have an efficient, accurate monitoring of um, mechanical, electrical, electromechanical equipment.
because of the urgent worldwide need to keep the environmental sustainability. Our partnership with Meralco and DENR and DTI is a great step for us to improve the environment. Both Meralco and MSAR are very important and very necessary to provide best quality energy to us 24 7. Samsung Electromechanics is among the top three global manufacturers of NACCs. We've been aggressively expanding to serve the Asian market because of the increasing demand in the region. Uh, the Philippines plant plays a large role. than uh, just our best power requirements. The quality of power is equally important to us. MSCC is uh, such a sensitive product, so it pays to have a reliable energy partner in Morocco and our subsidiary MSER who conducts preventive maintenance for our electrical facilities. Pleasant afternoon to our valued customers and business partners. Welcome to the Meralco Power Up Live webinar entitled Back in Business for 2021. Updates on sustainability and energy efficiency. I am Ken Ipleong, Meralco Relationship Manager, handling accounts under the electronics and automotive industry. On behalf of Meralco, we would like to thank you for your support the past year. The COVID-19 pandemic has greatly impacted us in ways most of us did not expect. And we thank you for working with us as we all face this new normal. We hope that through this webinar, we will be able to share with you the government's updates related to the energy industry and its impact to business customers. For the house rules, throughout this webinar, feel free to type questions or comments. We encourage you to identify yourself so we can acknowledge you properly. We will try our best to post and answer all of your questions during the question and answer session later. Please avoid posting personal details such as your service ID numbers, address, mobile numbers, and other personal details. And now, to formally start this webinar, let us hear from Mr. Marvin Huvero, serving as the head of the private sector relationship management of corporate business group. Thanks, Ken. A pleasant good afternoon to our valued customers and business partners. Thank you for joining us today at our webinar entitled Back in Business for 2021 Updates on Sustainability and Energy Efficiency. I hope that you and your families are keeping safe in this phase of this pandemic. My name is Marvin Vero, serving as the head of private sector relationship management of Corporate Business Group. 
I would like to acknowledge the presence of our park administrators and estate managers representing their organizations today. Uh, Mark Kaluwag from LISP1, Lorenzo from Carmel Ray 1, uh, Pedi Palomar from Carmel Ray 2, and other representatives from LISP1, 2 and 3, CIP1 and 2, and CPIP. The Greek philosopher Heraclitus once said that the only thing that is constant is change. Nothing endures but change. We will all remember 2020 as a year of unprecedented changes, not only on the actual health and economic crisis, but also on how we deal with our own lives. The best that we can do is to move forward and bounce back and think of ways of how to improve ourselves. One of which is to focus on sustainability and energy efficiency projects. With the energy efficiency and conservation law aims for all of us to be sustainable business, change is set upon us again as we need to educate and refresh ourselves on what this law mandates and more importantly, what impact it may have on the industry we are all in and our collective businesses. As we continue to face this new normal, this 2021, many businesses are facing a path forward full of stumbling blocks trying to adapt their operations so they can serve their customers best. Let's simply use these stumbling blocks to build something better for the, for the future of our business. We hope that with this webinar, we will be able to address your business concerns and continue to, to shed light on how we can navigate the times ahead together. Again, maraming salamat po and have a productive afternoon. Stay safe, everyone. Back to you, Ken. Uh, thank you, Sir Marvin. Um, moving along to our program, our first speaker will talk about the sustainability initiatives of Meralco. Let us all welcome on screen Senior Relationship Manager of the Electronics and Automotive Industry, Mr. Michael Garcia. Thank you, Ken. Good afternoon to all. Thank you very much for your time and your interest in our webinar. We hope that this afternoon's discussion will be able to provide you with more ideas on how you can further your practices in the area of sustainability and energy efficiency. I am Michael Garcia, Relationship Manager under the Electronics and Automotive Team. I am glad to share with you this afternoon our sustainability report. Our hope in sharing this is that you may get some additional ideas or inputs which you may also adapt in your own sustainability initiatives. As a note, our President and Chief Executive Officer, Attorney Ray C. Espinosa, is spearheading our sustainability efforts. Let's take a look at the world that we live in. In our country alone, 47,000 hectares of forest cover is lost yearly. We have 7 million Filipinos who do not have access to safe water, and we rank third highest when it comes to air pollution related deaths. Finally, about 17% of Filipinos are still poor. Based on studies, the earth is continuously deteriorating and would eventually become unfit for humans and other living things to dwell in, unless we do something now. This is our, our sustainability agenda which is rooted in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals or the UN SDG. In the slide, you will see the 17 UN SDGs. I'll give you a few seconds to glance over them. As a utility company, our focus is on UN SDG 7 or affordable and clean energy. Despite that though, we are actually able to promote other sustainability development goals through our other businesses and initiatives. Our sustainability agenda is focused on four areas. Power, planet, people, and prosperity. For power, our aspiration is to provide energy for all at all times. As we exert efforts to provide affordable, reliable, and accessible clean energy to everyone we serve. 
And for planet, it captures our initiatives to help protect and preserve Mother Earth. For people, this is where we embed a culture of excellence, sustainability, and inclusivity across our organization. Finally, on prosperity, it is something that underpins all the other piece, or this is our drive to help create a better life for all. That's our sustainability agenda. It is then operationalized by our overarching sustainability program, hashtag powering the good life, which is supported by five pillars, namely community electrification, direct emissions reduction, resource efficiency, waste management, and workplace and operational excellence. Each of these touches on one or more of the focus areas we earlier mentioned. For community electrification under power, we have Meralco Electrification Program. Under this, our aim is to achieve 100% energization of our franchise area by 2021. We are also into energizing far-flung communities. As an example, we have energized Isla Verde and Cagbalete Island in Quezon Province with the microgrid solutions combining up solar PVs and batteries. We proceed to planet. As you recall, we have three agenda and first is the direct emissions reduction. Under direct emissions reduction, these are our initiatives to help reduce our carbon footprint. In particular, we would like to dignify our power supply portfolio so that by 2021, we would like to secure an addition of, tw of 2,000 megawatts of renewable energy contracts through M-Green. We would also like to invest around 1,350 megawatts in renewable energy projects over the next five years. As an example, the maiden project of M Green in San Miguel Bulacan broke ground in December last year and is expected to come online during the first quarter of this year. To date, we have 24 megawatts own use solar installed within our franchise. We are also trying to explore battery energy storage systems. In fact, we have piloted the two megawatt lithium based battery storage facility in San Rafael Bulacan. It is the first grid scale battery connected to the network and it will help us better manage the intermittency coming from our RE investments. Next under planet after decarbonization or reduction of carbon emissions is the electrification of our vehicles fleet. Under this program, we scan our fleets to determine which ones we can electrify. As part of this, we launch our green mobility program which entails electrifying the vehicle fleet of Meralco. As an example of this, we will be deploying close to 60 e-bikes to our business centers for use of our field representatives during meter inspections. We are also planning to transform one of our business areas into a showcase for e-bikes. We are also already scanning our service utility vehicle fleets comprised of pickups and basket trucks, among others to determine which ones we can electrify in the next few years. And during the pandemic, we launched the e-micromobility employee purchase program, which encourages our employees to transition to e-motorcycle city, city kick scooters for their commuting. Outside Meralco, through Isakai, we launched the Makati Mandaluyong electric chip operation in 2019. We also deployed events to help transport students and faculty members at De La Salle University in Malabon. Last year, we also launched the Heritage Route in Marikina City by providing EGIPs. Still under planet, we have energy efficiency measures. Under this, we launched the Resource Conservation and Efficiency Program, wherein we replace majority of our lighting fixtures in our facilities with LED alternatives. We also upgraded our HVAC system and refreshed a number of our IT equipment. We also launched an energy efficiency dashboard. On the other side of this, through MSERV, we also strive to help our customers with energy efficiency solutions. MSERV can provide power quality audits, lighting efficiency services, HVAC efficiency services, and energy management system offerings. Under Planet, which is another program under sustainability, is the Race to Zero Waste. Here, we try to minimize the amount of waste we generate 
can divert as much as we can away from landfills. The large part of this program is the company-wide ban on single-use plastics or SUPs, which we started in 2019. Our SUP ban does not only apply to our internal people or to our internal facilities. We also require our supply chain partners to comply. As of October last year, we have avoided about 150,000 kilograms of SUPs, which is equivalent to about 15 million plastic bottles. Also, under Race to Zero Waste program, we've implemented hashtag Health Without Harm initiatives, which aims to facilitate responsible management of our COVID-19 wastes. Under this, we created guidelines for the handling of disposable PPEs in the workplace, and we also deployed yellow beans for our COVID-19 wastes in all our facilities. In all this, we try to make sure that we comply with the EOH guidelines and DNR standards with respect to temporary storage and hauling of our infectious wastes. Finally, under the risk to zero waste, it is worth noting that we are using ester oil for our distribution transformers as against mineral oil. Ester oil is good for the environment as it is derived from plant-based substances. Its main benefit is that it makes our transformers 99% recyclable and biodegradable. Now, under people in 2019, we became a pioneer signatory in the UN Women Empowerment Principles. As of today, we are one of only four signatories in the country and the only one in the energy sector. We would also like to highlight our Orange Feet program, where we employ a holistic approach in ensuring the physical, mental, and spiritual well-being of our employees. We also rolled out our code like chatbot last year which helps us monitor the daily work arrangement, including the health and wellness status of our employees. For prosperity, it is and communities. First, for customers, we enable our more than 7 million customers to better understand their consumption through programs such as Bright Ideas and the Orange Tag. We also try to improve our customer experience to virtual customer agency and the launch of the online customer appointment. With respect to communities, our social development arm, One Meralco Foundation, drives the efforts in household and school electrification. In 2019, over 8,000 homes of low-income families were, en were energized. Under school electrification, OMF also installed solar PV kits to power the learning tools in off-grade schools. Apart from energization, OMF also tries to educate our youth on the efficient and sustainable use of energy. Under this, we have equipped public schools and students with energy ed kits, which is a learning package with flashcards that aims to teach topics on electricity and energy efficiency. Meanwhile, through our Bayad Center, we have partnered with the Department of Education in launching the Sapat Dapat Financial Literacy Program. Still under prosperity, we, will, we would also like to highlight that Meralco supports Bayanihan and Communal Unity. In 2019, we deployed our linemen and engineers to help restore electricity, erect electric poles, and other activities in Albay after Typhoon Tisoy. In 2020, when Typhoon Rolly hit Bicol, we also sent power restoration teams and equipment to, to Catanduanes. We would also like to share our efforts sustainability-wise amid the pandemic under hashtag powering the good life. Under power, it is our supreme effort to ensure that we keep the lights on for all our customers. In relation to this, we have energized 700 plus vital institutions, including government agencies, hospitals, and treatment facilities during the pandemic. Under Planet, we use our electric vehicles and we work very closely with the DOTR and the LGUs to deploy these EVs in ferrying our personnel and health workers to and fro medical facilities. Under People, we donated PPEs and food, and food packs to 21,000 health workers and other frontliners. We also had our multipurpose hall converted to provide temporary accommodation for our medical city frontliners last year. Finally, under prosperity, we raised close to 30 million pesos from our employees 
to fund programs supporting those hardest hit during the pandemic. And also donated care packages and gift certificates to around 14,000 marginalized families. For Meralco, this is just the beginning of our journey. We acknowledge though that a lot still needs to be done for us to achieve powering the good life for all. At this point, let me share with you the different subsidiaries under Meralco. I'll go in detail in the next slide. So following are some of this with a brief description of their different offerings. So MSERV provides customer load side management solutions. Among their different offerings is one relevant these days, and that is the provision of indoor air quality solutions. Radius, on the other hand, provides connectivity solutions anchored on a fiber optic network. PS Core, meanwhile, offers engineering, construction, and maintenance activities. Spectrum provides end-to-end -end renewable energy solutions. Bayad Center, on the other hand, is our outsourced payment solution, outsourced payment collections solutions. Isakai finally provides end-to-end -end electric transport solutions. To know more about Meralco's programs and how we can assist you further, you may get in touch with your respective relationship managers. You may also email us at customercare at meralco.com.ph. You may also visit www.corporatepartners.meralco.com.ph or you may call 02-16210. Thank you very much and we hope you were able to pick up a thing or two from this presentation that can further boost your sustainability practices in your own companies. Have a good day and stay safe. <clears throat>
on the specific data that DOE will be needing. You will also need uh, regular monitoring reports, um, compliance audits every three years uh, to be performed by a qualified ESCO. Um, then this April, you will need to submit your consumption data for the last six years. This is very important. It's no longer five years because the law took effect last year. So according to the DOE, um, you need to present your six year consumption data. Be very careful when declaring um, your consumption data because this will be the basis for DOE to require the minimum reduction going forward. So consult your ESCO or um, someone from the DOE to accurately uh, report uh, this data. Um, consumption data is not just power. You will also need to look at uh, diesel and other fuels, which you will convert to kilowatt hours. The formula is available with the DOE, and if you need help with that, we can also send it to you. Now, after you have done that, you need to identify projects to help you reduce consumption. So on the next slide, uh, we've already categorized all of the requirements. So if um, your uh, friendly RM can um, give this slide to you, you, you will already have a quick sheet um, and a checklist uh, to see all the necessary compliance requirements. And on the next slide, all the different reports that you need to accomplish. Um, all of these forms are on the DOE website. And I'm sure Danny will talk about it in greater detail later. We've also included the hyperlink, so you can just click that and go directly to the page. OK, on the next slide, um, to summarize, uh, the law requires obligations and um, it enforces management of your day to day operations and your consumption targets, but it will also provide incentives. Um, if you choose to embark on a, an energy efficiency project. For now, um, based on the latest release by the BOI, only um, the ITH uh, or income tax holiday is uh, available for all of us. Um, you can either enjoy a four year uh, ITH or a six year ITH for pioneer projects. There are lots of um, details in the in the website of BOI, so you can check if you qualify for pioneer status. So that's the good news. The other benefits um, Danny will talk about later there are things like uh, uh, import uh, tax uh, exemptions, but all of those will be released gradually by the DOE as they get approval from the BOI. So having said that, are you ready for uh, the implementation of the law? Are you, is your organization already set up for energy efficiency? Uh, the good news is uh, MSERV is here with um, services classified under three pillars, energy management, audit and advisory, and design and build. For energy management, on the next slide, um, we can do a deep dive on the law and how to fill out the forms. We can train your energy managers with um, enough tools for them to actually fill out the forms themselves or be your energy manager. We can also help you with the framework if you don't already have ISO 50001 and help you identify projects that you can um, get approval for and deliver the needed uh, reduction going forward. And on the next slide, um, the second pillar is audit and advisory. The law requires all designated establishments to com comply with the audit uh, performed only by ESCOs every three years. So if the law um, took effect last year, you will need to submit an audit report for all of your buildings or all of your facilities within three years. So it's best if you have multiple plants or multiple buildings to, to start early. If you need a more thorough um, audit and if you need to get funding um, from outside of your company, if you don't want to internally fund your CapEx, 
you we can do an investment grade audit. The, this is a 30 day audit that you can avail of and you will be able to submit this uh, to any financial institution and get the funding you need. Now, if it's electrical in nature and uh, you're worried about the reliability of your facility, of course, our core services are electrical based and uh, we can do a reliability audit for you. On the next few slides, you will see some snapshots of what you can expect to see if you choose to um, engage with us. On the next slide is um, some of the electrical uh, reports that we can provide. So you've already uh, audited, you've already trained for it, you've already pinpointed what you want to do to reduce in, uh, consumption. Um, MSERV, um, MSERV's third pillar is actually to help you design and build the project. So it may be electrical in nature, mechanical, lighting, or automation. So let's go through each one in greater detail. So for electrical, uh, we can look at your high efficiency motors, um, supply sag correctors if those are needed, uh, cap banks, and some filters. Um, for mechanical, um, on the next slide, we can uh, look at your cooling systems or your steam systems or your um, um, all your other mechanical systems and um, also uh, do inverter system retrofits and heat recovery um, projects. Lighting is also uh, critical. I'm sure uh, a lot of you are already using um, high efficiency and um, very uh, energy conserving uh, lighting systems, but you might want to consider a lighting management system so you can optimize and uh, turn off or even schedule um, to turn off uh, some of your lights when not in use. And of course, the last is optimization by uh, automation. We, um, to guide you and to help you track your improvements in efficiency and reduction in consumption, we have the energy management system of MSERV. It's a platform that you can make use of to track and uh, pinpoint energy consumption up to the equipment level on a daily basis, real time basis actually, and compare different equipment, different uh, manufacturing lines, different facilities um, real time. You can also have different views for different levels of the organization and allow you on the next slide, we can show you the, the what it looks like. Um, uh, the dashboard can look like that, but you can customize depending on the information you want to see and even set alerts to alert you if you are falling beyond um, the threshold that you have set for yourself. So aside from the EMS, which we can deploy very quickly, um, um, the good news is it doesn't have to be very complicated. If you only want to monitor a specific equipment, um, you can just um, customize it for that equipment. But if you want to wire the whole facility, that's also possible. So it's very scalable and you can uh, implement in phases. Yes, on the next slide. So um, enough talk about uh, theory. We want to talk to you about results. We can help you achieve actual results. So. On the next few slides, um, NLEX is our first example. We did a retrofit of their um, um, highway and their street lights uh, in the Middle Island um, and added o and um, They were able to achieve about an annual uh, savings of 14 million by just replacing the lights to LEDs and outsourcing the o and And Another example is, of course, Meralco. Um, we did an energy efficiency audit of all our business centers, um, and they were able to reduce lighting by 33% and AC uh, by 60, 60% annually. Another example is uh, on design. For MDC, Ayala's construction arm, um, we do most of their buildings. Uh, we were able to help them reduce their capacity by 20%, resulting in reduced capex as well. 
Another example um, is in cellular life. As you know, the, our mechanical systems are the biggest consumer of power. So for um, their building in Alabang, we upgraded their chiller to a magnetic oil free chiller, uh, delivering a 60% reduction in power consumption and um, about 2 million pesos in savings per month. Another example of a chiller upgrade um, is Robinson Smalls with 10 sites um, that availed of the oil free chillers, delivering a monthly savings of 1.1 million. And um, by adding automation on top of the chiller, we were able to further reduce by 15%. More examples on the power quality, uh, power factor side. We were able um, to improve a Republic Cement's power factor from 81.96 to 95%, delivering 6.5 million pesos in annual, save, in annual savings. So all of these companies have already started their energy efficiency journey. We hope you will uh, choose us uh, as we future-proof all of your um, businesses. So if you have any uh, questions or if you want us to do a deeper dive with your company, uh, you can get in touch with your RM. Um, I'm sure Arnold and his team will be very happy to help you. Over to you, Ken. Thank you, Ms. Cecil. Ms. Cecil. Uh, again, again, feel free to type your questions and comments. We encourage you to identify yourself so we can acknowledge you properly. Moving along to our program, uh, our next speaker will talk about the obligations of designated establishments under the EENC law. Let us all welcome again on screen Energy Solutions Specialist, Mr. Danny Aquilio. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Again, uh, good afternoon and, and uh, I'm Danny Aquilio from the Technical Services Corporate Business Group. Uh, I'm sure that uh, all of us here have already heard about the Energy Efficiency and Conservation Act, and I'm here to provide you with some updates regarding the latest issue ones of the DOE pertaining to the Act. The deck that I will be using comes with permission from the DOE's Energy Utilization Management Bureau as part of its information and education campaign. Slide. No, the contents of uh, this presentation include the following energy service companies or ESCOs, Philippine Energy Labeling Program, uh, designated establishments, the concept and its obligations, energy conserving design of buildings, and uh, fiscal incentives. Now, uh, Republic Act 11285 or the Energy Efficiency and Conservation Act was approved and signed on April 12, 2019, and two weeks upon publication, it became effective on May 22, 2019. The EENC Act, as it is known, institutionalizes energy efficiency and conservation, enhances the efficient use of energy, promote the development and utilization of efficient renewable energy technologies, grants incentives to energy efficiency and conservation projects, and protect the environment in support of the economic and social development goals of the country. On energy service companies or ESCOs, these are our partners in compliance with the Energy Efficiency and Conservation Act as they offer multi-technology services and goods towards designing and developing energy efficiency projects, delivering and guaranteeing energy savings, and ensuring cost-effective and optimal performance. The governing rules for ESCO is the Department Circular Number DC 
The scope of the Department Circular Number DC 2020-09-0018 establishes the guidelines, rules, and procedures in the administration, classification, and certification of ESCOs with the overarching goal of enhancing uh, professionalism in the service, credibility, and as well as quality in the service. There are two classifications for ESCOs. The first is uh, the registered ESCO, which is one that seeks accreditation from professional services to the DOE for the first time and meets the minimum requirement on the legal and technical capacity. The certificate of a uh, regular ESCO is valid for three years. A registered ESCO is the entry level for energy service companies. On the other hand, a certified ESCO is in addition to meeting the requirements of a registered ESCO, Shell has also a proven performance or results based project savings experience with proven customer satisfaction. The validity of the certificate for a certified ESCO is for five years. Now, as of uh, February 1, 2020, there are a total of uh, 40 certified and registered ESCOs with the DOE. Included in the list is uh, the Miralco Energy Inc. or MSERV. Now, um, in terms of the role of what ESCOs can play in the Philippine energy efficiency market, between 2017 to 2040, the DOE estimates that with accelerated energy efficiency capital flows, either through ESCO performance contracts, PPP transactions, joint venture agreements, government large-scale retrofit programs, and other innovative solutions, there's a potential of uh, EE capital mobilization of 8 trillion pesos. If simply through business as usual, wherein EE capital is to be mobilized through self-finance, debt finance, lease finance, or other in-house innovative modalities, the DOE is looking at 4 trillion pesos in terms of uh, capital requirement. These are all based on projected balance sheet of host or end user for the energy efficiency market. Now proceeding now to the Philippine Energy Labeling Program or PELP. It intends to encourage the practice of uh, energy efficiency and conservation as a way of life through the promotion and use of energy efficient products. It also likewise uh, seeks to transform the market by regulating uh, energy consuming products or the so-called ECPs. There are two issuances on the matter. The first one is Department Circular Number DC 2020-06-0015, which prescribes the guidelines of the Philippine Energy Labeling Program for compliance of importers, manufacturers, distributors, and dealers of electrical appliances and other energy consuming products. Now the second circular is Department Circular Number DC 2020-06-0016, which prescribes the minimum energy performance for products or MEPP. Uh, well, for the for covered products of uh, PLP, again, for compliance of importers, manufacturers, distributors, dealers, and retailers of uh, the energy consuming products. The objectives of uh, the PELP is really on um, empowering the consumers in their choice of uh, energy efficient products at the point of sale, to realize energy savings and reduction of energy consumption through the use of these energy efficient products now for e MEPP to eliminate the entry and sale of inefficient and 
sometimes substandard products in the local market. And of course, the overall goal is to reduce greenhouse, greenhouse gas emissions. Now, uh, the initial list of uh, PLP covered products include uh, room air conditioning units, refrigeration appliances, televisions, as well as lighting products. Again, PLP covers importers, manufacturers, distributors, and dealers of energy consuming products. Now on the concept of uh, designated establishments, well, some of these were already uh, discussed by uh, Ms. Cecil, but uh, again, designated establishments uh, refer, this refers to uh, private entity partners uh, in the commercial, industrial, transport, power, and other sectors, which may be later identified as uh, energy intensive indust industries. These are based on their annual energy consumption equivalent. Now, I use the, the term equivalent because it is a combination of uh, fuel, and, fuel and electricity consumption, which is expressed in uh, kilowatt hours. There are three classifications of uh, designated establishments. Uh, the first is uh, other designated establishments, other DE, or those that consume at least uh, 100,000 kilowatt hours, but less than 500,000 kilowatt hours. Now, second will be your type one DEs or those in ex uh, whose consumption uh, is in excess of 500,000 kilowatt hours, but under 4 million kilowatt hours. And the third is type two uh, DEs or those in excess of uh, 4 million kilowatt hours. Now, designated establishments are governed by memorandum circular number MC 2020-05 dash 001, which directed all designated establishments under commercial, industrial, and uh, transport sectors to submit, among others, energy consumption reports. Now, DEs are mandated to integrate uh, an energy management system, but, uh, well, to integrate an energy management system in their business operations, but certification is not uh, mandatory and is only encouraged. Now, in terms of uh, requirements, other DEs are required uh, to uh, submit an annual energy, annual energy uh, conservation report contained as uh, EEC Form 3 and their annual energy utilization re report, uh, EEC Form 4. For guidance in accomplishing the forms, you can download the general instructions at the DOE website through the link as provided in this slide. Now for type 1 uh, designated establishments, these are the highlights which they are obligated uh, to comply with. Now, the type 1 DEs, uh, they should employ an energy conservation officer or ECO. The ECO would have at least two years continuous hands-on experience in the installation, operation, and maintenance of energy consuming machines and equipment in the very same or uh, similar type one designated establishments. establishment. Now, DEs are required to set up annual targets, plans, and methods of measurement and verification for the implementation of energy efficiency and con conservation projects through the submission of annual energy consumption report or EEC form 3 and annual energy conservation report or EEC form 4 on or before 15th of April. Now the Google form link for the online registration and submission of DEs uh, is shown in this slide. Now for type two designated establishments, they are required to employ an energy manager. Now an energy manager should be a graduate of a, a four year course or equivalent 
preferably engineering, with at least three years of uh, continuous hands-on experience in the maintenance, installation, operation of energy consuming machines and equipment, again in type two designated establishments. Uh, likewise, they are required to uh, submit their AEECR and AEUR forms three and four. Um, now again, for uh, both energy conservation officer and energy manager, the concerned DE needs them to be registered with the DOE. Certification will follow once the training modules are available, as mentioned by Ms. Cecil. Now, the DEs should also duly notify the DOE in writing on the appointment or separation from service of the respective ECO or EM within 10 working days from effectivity of this personal action. Types 1 and 2 uh, DEs are also required to conduct an energy audit again, as mentioned by Ms. Cecil, once every three years by engaging either a certified energy auditor or an accredited ESCO and submit an energy audit report to the DOE. Now, some examples of uh, energy efficiency projects that uh, DEs may include in their EEC Form 3 uh, include the following, uh, reduction of building cooling demand through effective natural ventilation, upgrading to high efficient cooling systems, reducing lighting loads, lighting system retrofit, including the installation of lighting sensors, installation of building energy management system, adoption of energy conserving conservation measures and best practices such as in the operation of AC system and other equipment and adoption of uh, the guidelines on energy conserving design of building during retrofitting of their buildings. Now, proceeding uh, to the topic on the energy conserving design for buildings, which is covered by uh, DC 2020-12-0026, signed last December 22, published last uh, February 1, and it became effective, effective this March 6. Now, why energy conserving design of buildings? Uh, because uh, there exists a lot of opportunities or improvement of opportunities in terms of building energy consumption in the areas of cooling. Now, this slide from this slide, you can show that uh, you will notice here that around 56% goes to the cooling requirement of the building. Now, lighting around 18%, office equipment around 16% and other lows at uh, 10%. Now, uh, the guidelines on, on the energy conserving design of buildings um, really encourages and promotes the energy conserving design of buildings as well as services to reduce the use of uh, energy with due regard to cost effectiveness, building function, comfort, health, safety, and productivity of the occupants. Now, the guidelines cover uh, electrical loads or, or commercial buildings with electrical loads of at least 112.5 kVA or with at least 10,000 square meters of total gross floor area. Now, key highlights of the guidelines include a section on uh, building envelope, another section for uh, electrical systems, and also for mechanical systems. Now, the requirements for energy efficiency in buildings will boost the demand for energy efficient materials and technologies to help meet the requirements of the guidelines. It is also an opportunity for services such as those offered by energy service companies to come in and assist in meeting these requirements. The overview of the guidelines uh, on energy conserving design of buildings would cover uh, the building envelope, uh, provisions on air conditioning, ventilating, steam and hot water systems under uh, the mechanical side, whereas lighting, electric motors, electric power and distribution, 
and uh, renewable energy systems and equipment uh, will are included in the electrical side. Now for uh, fiscal incentives. Um, the energy efficiency projects are those projects that are designed uh, to reduce the energy consumption or cost by any improvement, repair, alteration, or betterment of any building or facility or any equipment, a fixture or furnishing to be added to or uh, used in any building, facility, or vehicle, including the manufacturing and provision of services uh, related thereto. Now, for an EE project to be given some fiscal incentives, uh, energy savings uh, must first be declared by a third party energy audit um, by the, done by the DOE or by a DOE certified party. Now, application must be accompanied by an endorsement from the Department of Energy. In terms of uh, processing time, from project implementation to the DOE's endorsement to the Board of Investment, it will uh, take a total of uh, 20 processing, uh, 30, uh, 20 days. Now, the primary evaluation criteria would have to meet at least 15% savings threshold measured at the project boundary in order for the suggested rates of income tax holiday availment. Now, income tax holiday shall be reckoned on the date the EENC project becomes operational. Uh, the direction is the more energy savings generated, uh, the more ITH provided. Now, all registered uh, EEC projects, particularly those that meet or exceed 25%, may likewise be considered for pioneer incentives under Executive Order 226. Now, and why are we talking about uh, energy efficiency? Uh, it is because of the projected increase in the total power generation requirements of the Philippines based on the uh, APEC energy demand and uh, supply outlook. Now, looking at an increase of 4.2% during the outlook period from the 2010 level of around uh, 67 terawatt hours, the energy requirement is projected to increase to 187 terawatt hours by 2035. If we were to achieve a 15% savings across all sector, uh, the predictive uh, maximum potential savings this year would be equivalent to 17.26 terawatt hour and up to uh, 28.05 terawatt hours in uh, 2035. The energy savings would be equivalent to um, 172.6 billion pesos this year, all the way up to 280.5 billion pesos savings by 2035 at a rate of uh, 10 pesos per kilowatt hour. Uh, thank you for your kind attention and uh, for more info you may contact your relationship managers uh, through the indicated contact details. Good afternoon. Back to you, Ken. Thank you, Sir Danny. Um, may we now call on Mr. Boyam Calderon, who will be our moderator for today's question and answer segment. Boyam. Thank you, Ken. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Boyam Calderon, Director Relationship Manager handling Azurian Technology Center Philippines, Eaton Industries, and Tech Position, <coughs> and the Latman. At this point, we will now proceed with the Q&A portion, wherein our speakers will be joined by Arnold de Guzman, serving as the industry lead of the electronics and automotive team of the corporate business group. Again, feel free to type your questions and comments. We encourage you to identify yourselves so we can acknowledge you properly. 
I shall now direct the comments and questions of our viewers. Well, the first question uh, came from an anonymous attendee. Other than MSERB services, are there other ways Merago can help its customers achieve energy efficiency? I think for this question, we'll have to ask uh, Mr. McCoy Garcia for the answer. Sir McCoy. <clears throat> okay, thank you for that question. Thank you, Boyan. Well, aside from MSERB, um, I've touched on a number of other subsidiaries of Meralco earlier during my presentation. Um, as mentioned during my presentation, uh, we have Spectrum who can provide you with end-to-end -end, uh, renewable energy solutions. So they can assist you in the installation of solar PVs. Um, they also offer solar street lights for your perimeter lighting. Uh, among um, the companies where they've installed solar PVs uh, include Toyota Motor Philippines, uh, who I guess is uh, represented also in this uh, webinar. Hello, uh, friends from Toyota. Uh, also, uh, they've installed uh, solar PVs in uh, Philip Morris, uh, a number of Shell stations, uh, Vista Malls, um, Erie, and uh, Manila, uh, to name a few. And then uh, we also have Isakai, which is another subsidiary of Meralco. Uh, they provide end-to-end -end electric transport solutions. So they can help you set up your EV fleet and uh, charging stations. And some of the sites where they have EV shuttles uh, and or charging stations include uh, Ateneo de Manila University, uh, a number of De La Salle campuses, uh, the Net Lima building in uh, BGC, uh, also to, to name a few. Uh, they can also provide shuttling services within uh, industrial parks or between multiple sites of a company. So Spectrum and Isakai can also uh, aid you uh, in achieving uh, energy efficiency aside from MSERV. Thank you. Thank you, Mikoy. Moving on to another set of questions uh, from an anonymous attendee also. Has the business center operations resumed to normal? I think uh, we can ask Mr. Arnold de Guzman to answer this question. Uh, thank you, Boyan. So our business center operations uh, are in normal already, normal operations already. So they are open uh, weekdays, Monday to Friday, and also in Saturday. So you can visit them. And may I also suggest that you uh, explore the possibility of uh, paying through automatic debit arrangement as a convenient way or convenient option. So you can set a meeting with your relationship manager to discuss this alternative option. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Arnold. Another question coming again from an anonymous attendee. If we have multiple establishments, is it allowed to just assign one ECO or EM or energy conservation officer or energy manager instead of placing one per establishment? I think this uh, question uh, will be answered by uh, Mr. Danny Aquilio. Sir Danny. Uh, thank you for that question, uh, Diane. Uh, yes, as long as the ECO or EM can still deliver and comply with uh, repertorial requirements of the D Department of Energy. Also, uh, the ECO or ECM should work under the umbrella of uh, the same uh, designated establishment. For example, uh, the ECO or EM can be assigned to regional offices of the company, but not to another company or uh, entity. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Danny. Um, again, uh, another question from um, an anonymous participant again. So, can MSERP provide SECO or CEM services? If you do not want to hire a designated uh, SECO or CEM in your company, I think Ms. Cecil Marvilla can answer this question. I'm Cecil. Yeah, thanks, Boyam. Yes, uh, MSERV um, and all other ESCOs 
can sign for you as your energy manager or your energy conservation officer. Thank you, Ms. Essie. So we have a few more questions here. Uh, we are facing challenges right now with reduced production because of low demand from our customers. Can you advise what should be our next steps so we will not be penalized by the guaranteed minimum billing demand because of our low consumption? I think uh, we can ask uh, Mr. Arnold de Guzman to answer this question. Okay. Arnold? Mm -hmm. So thank you, Boyam. So uh, my first advice is to, uh, of course, review your contract, current contract with Meralco. Uh, if that's not applicable anymore, then uh, you need to formalize uh, a formal request for the reduction of load. Uh, you can set up a meeting with your relationship manager to check your past historical uh, demands. And if it's proven that uh, you're way below uh, the consumption or the demand, then we can right-size your contract so that you will not be penalized by the guaranteed minimum billing demand. Uh, another option, uh, if it's uh, moving forward, uh, you, you can uh, provide us an electrical plan of your revised load so that this will be the basic, basis of the reduced contract with Naralco. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Arnold. And another question, can an REE be an energy manager or should the energy manager have continuous hands-on experience? For this question, uh, let, let's ask uh, Sir Daniel Aquilio. Sir Daniel. Um, thanks again, uh, Boyam. Now, uh, an EM should be a graduate of uh, a four-year course, well, preferably electrical or preferably engineering, not just uh, uh, electrical engineering, any engineering course, and the word end. There there's the word end. No? Should have a uh, should have three years of continuous hands-on experience in installing, operating, and maintaining equipment uh, of type two facilities. So, REE would become an energy manager if he has already that three years of uh, continuous hands-on experience. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Danny. Moving on to the to other sets of questions. I think this one is uh, interesting. Again, from an anonymous uh, attendee. I read in the news three days ago that uh, Dole has issued ventilation guidelines for workplaces and public transport. Can you explain what will be its impact to us manufacturing companies? Uh, for this question, may we ask Ms. Cecil Marvilla to answer. Yes, thanks Boyam. Just a few days ago, we received the DOLE circular uh, requiring all companies to comply with the ventilation guidelines to avoid the spread of COVID-19. So they're basically looking at um, in introduction of filters, um, sanitation devices, and opening of doors and windows where it's possible, and in um, improvement of your HVAC facilities. So um, for the semicons uh, in our audience today, I'm sure you already have all of these in place, but for others who don't, uh, feel free to get in touch with us so we can help you comply with the dollar circular. And it's already um, executory. So if you need a copy of the, the memo, we can provide it to our friends from uh, CBG, Arnold and his team. Thank you, Ms. Cecil. So we still have a few sets of questions here. So next question would be, what are some energy efficiency practices have you employed in your, build, in your own buildings in Morocco? I think this is uh, care of uh, Mr. Mikoy Garcia. Sir Mikoy. <coughs> okay, thank you, Boyam. Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, well, for our Lopez building and uh, our so-called technical services building or TSB in Ortigas, uh, we have installed uh, solar PVs. For Lopez building, uh, uh, by the way, um, Lopez building is the one you can see in our webinar background. Okay. So for Lopez building, we installed a capacity of 56 uh, kilowatt peak, while for TSB, we installed a cap capacity of 120 kilowatt peak. 
um, this will be able to supply up to 10% and 50% of uh, Lopez buildings and TSBs uh, selected uh, load requirements, respectively. Uh, this is also expected to lead to an annual uh, kilowatt hour reduction of uh, around 245,000 uh, kilowatt hours. More, more importantly, this will lower down Meralco's company use greenhouse gas emissions by an estimate of 175,000 tons of uh, carbon dioxide equivalent. Uh, we also installed heat reflecting film in uh, our Lopez building to reduce uh, build, building heat gain from solar radiation. This will be able to reduce the building's heat gain by up to 60%, thereby reducing the building cooling requirements. Uh, this can also lead to an annual kilowatt hour uh, reduction of about 160,000 kilowatt hours. And then uh, we also replace our conventional air conditioning units with inverter types with minimum EER of uh, 11.5. This can add uh, an additional 22% of energy reduction over existing conventional air conditioning units or an equivalent annual kilowatt hour reduction of around 240,000 kilowatt hours. And then uh, also as mentioned by Mom Cecil uh, in her presentation earlier, um, MSERV uh, upgraded the cheater plants in our Meralco Business Solution Center and also in Lopez building. So this is expected to reduce uh, kilowatt hour consumption uh, by about uh, 60%. And then they also perform lighting and HVAC efficiency audit in all our business centers and conducted a uh, retrofit of lights and air conditioning units in our different uh, buildings and also business centers. Thank you. Thank you, Mikoy. So moving on to the next questions. Um, we are planning to install solar at our plant. Since we are not planning to export power, do we still need to inform Meralgo? I think this can be answered by uh, Mr. Arnold de Guzman. So, Arnold. Uh, thank you, Boyam. So, my the answer is yes, you still need to uh, inform Meralgo, formally inform Meralgo, because we need to subject it to a distribution impact study. Uh, the reason is because we need to check uh, if the protection requirements of your solar is compliant uh, and ensure the safety of both the personnel of uh, Meralco and your employees, especially during maintenance. So again, the answer is yes, you need to inform Meralco if you have uh, planned uh, installation of solars, even if this is a uh, zero export. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Arnold. So another question. Um, can this tax incentive be retroactively applied to energy efficient machines and equipment they've already installed? I think, uh, Sir Danny, do you have an answer for this, sir? Um, again, thank you, Boyam. Um, could be if uh, the energy efficiency uh, project was done through a uh, DOE certified party or through an energy service company. The EEC project uh, should have also been endorsed uh, by the Department of Energy to the Board of Investment. Now, treatment of uh, the income tax holiday would be prospective or once the ENC project becomes uh, operational. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Danny. Another question here coming from, again, anonymous uh, attendee. For the investment grade audit, can the duration be shortened in time for the April 2021 deadline? I think uh, M. Sir can answer this through uh, Ms. Sesi. Ms. Sesi, can you please yeah. answer? Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Boyam. Yes, uh, we there are ways to shorten. Uh, typically, though, uh, ideally, it's 30 days, Sana. But you talk to us, we can find a way to help you still comply with the law. Okay, thank you, Ma'am Cecil. And another question coming from Amiel. Amiel or Amiel? So, 
his question is, what will be the first step in order to comply with RA 11.285? Do we need first to be audited for our energy consumption before going through registering the establishment to the DOE? I think, uh, Sir Dali, can you answer this question? Yeah, thanks, Boyam. Again, um, uh, the first step would probably to for you to uh, register your uh, either ECO or uh, uh, energy manager uh, using the DOE portal. And uh, you also need to submit uh, the required reports, the annual energy efficiency and utilization report or uh, annual energy conservation report. Uh, basically, that's the two requirement uh, for you to uh, uh, immediately uh, comply with uh, come April 15. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Danny. And uh, for the next question, uh, does Meralco have a group who can offer training for CEM? Um, Sir Danny, do you have an answer for this? Sir? Um, we have, thank you, Boya. Uh, we have uh, our Meralco Power Academy to offer, that offers uh, um, training, um, activities uh, to our various uh, various clients and uh, right now they can uh, no, they can you can approach our Meralco Power Academy uh, for your training needs thank you so I think the next question is also related to the uh, previous question target date of completion for the modules for psycho and CEM sir do, do, do we have any target date of completion uh, none yet uh, right now uh, since uh, the TESDA, the DOE, and some other uh, partners are still uh, uh, meeting and in, in the development stage of uh, crafting the required modules. And now, Sir Danny, I think this is also, yeah, you can also be the uh, respondent for this question. What are the penalty in case the DE failed to comply the April 15 deadline? How about Ms. Cecil? <laughs> yeah, um, there are fines uh, from 100,000 to 100 million. And there's also criminal liability. May kulong siya. So for your energy manager and your top management. Um, we've already detailed that in the slide that I showed earlier, uh, which will be provided to all of you. So, uh, yeah, and they're showing it. I cannot read it long. So fines and if you can zoom a bit, Anna. So there. So there, tama. Um, sorry, 10,000 pala to 1 million for type 1 and imprisonment of 1 to 5 years um, and fees of 100 to 100 million. But okay. don't worry for all of you, um, the DOE, we already asked this, the DOE will inform you um, and warn you several times before they impose the fine or impose the impris imprisonment. They don't want to be very negative about this. They just want everyone to comply. So especially now being the first year, hindi sila masyado magiging strict. So, Let's just do our best. And um, um, I'm sure wala namang fines na issue this year. So I think that answers the next question. Does the penalty for non-compliance will be implemented immediately even if the IRR of the law is not yet signed? It is signed yeah. already. The IRR has been signed. So it was signed last year. So it's really in effect already. But they have already said that they will not be strict this year because this is our first time to comply with the law. Okay, thank you, Ms. Cecil. I think the, the answer also for the next question, <clears throat> uh, confirmation would be the deadline uh, for the energy conservation report. I think uh, it was discussed earlier, April 15, right? April 15, yes. Right. April 15 of this year. For the next question, if a company has multiple establishment and was registered a separate entity, could they employ one energy manager only? Uh, Sir Danny, I think this is questions for you. 
uh, uh, yes, uh, they can employ an energy manager uh, uh, as long as, uh, well, we're talking here of an entity and uh, uh, an energy manager or an energy conservation officer may manage the multiple accounts as long as it belongs to the same entity. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sir Danny. If an establishment has multiple Naranco meter, is the energy utilization should be some of the meters? How about same entity but with separate buildings? Should the meter sum of as total electrical energy utilization? Um, Sir Danny, do you have an answer for this? Uh, again, um, it is on a uh, entity basis and uh, if uh, the energy um, utilization is to be some say sorry uh, what's can you uh, divide the question into two parts uh, the if first an part? establishment has multiple naranco meter is the energy utilization should be some of the meters well uh, the first question, sir. okay to answer the first question, question, the report should be in terms of uh, individual SINs. Uh, so you have several accounts and uh, the DOE would require uh, the submission of uh, reports, the required reports for each SIN. Although uh, the handling of the energy management may be done by one ECO or one EM, energy manager. Now the second question. How about same entity, but with separate buildings? Should the meter sum as total electrical energy utilization? Again, uh, for the DOE would require uh, separate reports for uh, different SINs. Just to announce, but uh, the entity may file it all at the same time under the name of the entity. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir, Danny. Moving on to the next question uh, coming from Rodel Alvarez of Ionix EMS. Is it possible to have another webinar to educate or enlighten all clients or business partners in accomplishing DOE form for each designated establishment? Uh, I think uh, Sir Arnold can answer this question. Uh, yes. Uh this is noted uh we'll check with our partners uh, if we can do another uh forum for this but maybe uh miss cecil has an input for this one miss cecil uh sure sure uh what we normally do is to um do a repeat of this um or if you want a more in-depth version there's a very small fee <laughs> that uh, arnold and his team can share with you so that you we can go through the whole form and uh, your energy managers can be there so we can train them now step by step how to fill out the forms and of course the uh, insider tips so you you can accomplish it well thank you Ms. Cecil uh, another question I think it, it, this was answered earlier uh, is there an institu institution that offers training for energy managers is the institution certified by DOE uh, Sir Danny, I think you answered this uh, earlier. Uh, currently, uh, the modules are still being uh, developed, so and no institution has has been certified uh, by the DOE in relation to uh, the training needs of uh, the the ENC Act. So, none yet. Okay, thank you, Sir Danny. I think this one is the last question so far. So the question is, how can we conserve energy on our air compressor or CDA installed on our company? Can you give us uh, some suggestions? Thank you, uh, Ms. Cecil. Can you please answer this question? Uh, sorry, uh, can you repeat the question? The, the question is, uh, how can we conserve energy on our air compressor or CDA or the compressed dry air installed on our company. Can you give us some suggestions? Thank you. Um, my suggestion is if we can uh, get the specs of your current uh, system so we can evaluate it based on um, benchmarks that we've already done in the past. 
and then we can tell you if we can still optimize it or not. So best to get in touch with us. Okay, thank you, Professor. So moving on to more questions here. So we encountered a problem with the building official regarding the applied demand factor. Can MSERB provide technical assistance with correct power capacity sizing? I think uh, Ms. Sesson, you can answer this question. Yes, uh, we can, of course, provide technical assistance on this. And uh, the good news is a lot of our engineers are also ex uh, engineers, so um, you're in good hands. Okay, thank you, Ms. Sesson. So again, uh, for next question, if we install EE measures, how soon can we anticipate savings or realize gains since installation is quite hefty on the company's palette as well? I think, um, Ms. Cecil, uh, this question is for you, ma'am. Uh -oh. uh, we have several um, smell ang issue, di ba? So we have several IQ solutions that can get rid of uh, bad smell. Um, we can employ different methods and it's best, uh, again, you can tell us more details so we can uh, do an accurate proposal for you. Thank you, Ms. Essie. And another question here is 500,000 kilowatt or kilowatt hour, I guess. The average of an annual consumption, uh, Sir Danny. Uh, thanks for that question, Boyam. Um, 500,000 uh, kilowatt hours is the equivalent of the annual energy consumption uh, requirement by the DE in year uh, 2019. So if you have an annual kilowatt hour equivalent consumption of at least uh, 100,000, you still need to submit your annual energy utilization report starting 2016, regardless if you have lesser consumption. So ganun yon. So 2019 ang basis for that uh, 500,000 kilowatt hours, 100 to 500,000 kilowatt hours, whatever your annual consumption in 2019. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Danny. And another question. I think this one is uh, from Cecil. What would be the payback period for a retrofit of HBAC, Ms. Cecil? Hi, uh, typically it's three to five years, but uh, of course it really depends on the size of the equipment that's needed to cool your facility. Okay, thank you, Ms. Cecil. Another one. Question uh, for type 2 DEs, are ECOs also required along with EMs or energy managers? Um, Sir Danny, can you please answer the question? Uh, okay, thank you, Boyam. Uh, only an energy management energy manager is required for type 2 designated establishments. Uh, an EM would be sufficient for type 2 dis designated establishments. Thank you, Sir Danny. And moving on to our last question. Uh, other than ESCO, who are certified to conduct the energy audit? I think uh, Ms. Cecil can answer this question. Um, I think uh, the DOEUMB also has in their website the same services. You can check that out. Um, I don't know if they have enough manpower to, though to accommodate everyone. Um, and I'm sure they will come out with a list of certified uh, auditors uh, when they're ready. But for now, uh, according to Director Patrick, um, ESCOs are your best bet to conduct uh, energy audits. There's another question, I guess that this would be our last question for the for this session. If a company is penalized, is it the EM or ECO liable? Um, Sir Danny, can you answer the question? Um, <laughs> okay, thanks, boy. Um, uh, well, definitely the, e the energy manager or energy conservation officer uh, would be involved, no? would be uh, uh, included uh, in the penalty and uh, will be penalized. Aside from EO, uh, ECO and EM, uh, the one that uh, signs the report would also be penalized. Okay, so thank you, uh, Sir Danny. I, I guess uh, that would be it for our program for this afternoon. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you also to our panelists for participating. I will now close our Q&A session and turn you over to Ken.
scan. I think uh, that was a very fruitful discussion. Clearly, we have a lot to discuss, but we hope that we were able to clarify and cover most, if not all, of the topics. Thank you to our panelists for joining the question and answer session. If you have further questions or concerns, we encourage you to contact us, your relationship managers, so we can be of help. You may also visit our website at www.corporatepartners.meralco.com.ph. Thank you again, and we hope to see you soon in our future meetings and webinars. We hope to do this more often. That is why we are posting the link to our survey form at the question and answer panel. Please share with us your thoughts on how best we can gain more useful information and tips from the Meralco Corporate Partners. I am Ken Itliong, your host for today. Good afternoon and stay safe, everyone.